Thanks uh, for coming here. It's a great, great turnout here at the beginning of the conference. I was looking through the sessions today, and I, I was quite impressed that, you know, I'm pretty much here to be uh, about wireless uh, communications, and essentially every Tuesday session has, has one or two sessions uh, focused in this area. So um, this is a, a sign of it. This, this stuff is important uh, to intellect. Uh, briefly here, our company is, I, I, by the way, I used to work with Nextel and Sprint and, and acquiring Spectrum. These days, mostly I represent holders of, of Spectrum. So some of the bands that I'll be talking about today, I'm representing our clients. Others uh, are just other bands that are potentially available and really with a, a focus on you know what's available in the short run. So over the last uh, uh, 10 years plus now, um, we've been serving both the public carriers uh, a lot of wireless internet service providers who operate in rural areas, and then critical infrastructure. So we've done a bunch of deals with uh, electric utilities, uh, rail operators. We are relatively unsuccessful so far in your business. So I'm hoping to hear, hear to change that, but uh, certainly we can provide advice uh, on the oil and gas uh, area. Uh, I think a lot of the requirements are similar. And, and then I'm also here to, to learn from you, uh, which reminds me, if I say something you don't agree with, or if you have a question as we go through, I think that I don't have nearly as, as uh, much content. It's, uh, it's uh, fairly focused here. So please ask a question or, or interrupt me if, if you have uh, any, any comments or questions. But we are experienced in this space. Uh, we got a, a long range view of some very specific applications from Mauricio. I thought that was quite, quite helpful. Um, here is kind of a, a general description of the types of applications uh, that we think you're, you're looking for. My view is, you know, first question is, is it fixed or mobile? Is, is the priority fixed or mobile? I'm going to say that today the, the predominant demand is more on the fixed as opposed to mobile side in terms of what we're seeing. I don't know if, uh, if any, any people who sort of feel like, no, no, we really need mobile. We need it right away. Okay. Yeah. yeah, we got one. Okay. So, I, and and we have, uh, you know, there are frequencies that are support both. Some of the frequencies in the 4G, 5G space um, that uh, are coming along now are available first for fixed, and then will evolve to mobile. So that's true, for example, in band 54. And and I should say, this is a presentation about 4G and 5G spectrum. So, actually. Our best, business, our best business last year was in traditional, what I call industrial radio spectrum, 220, 450, uh, 700 megahertz uh, without the 3GPP version. That's what we sold more of last year. So, so there's still a market, and, and we uh, you know, are glad to help you with that. We're in booth 100 if you want to stop by. We can show you 24 different spectrum bands, not all, all available in all places, but uh, but uh, most of them available um, in, in many places around the country, and some of them nationally. The focus, though, today is 4G, 5G spectrum, right? So that's, uh, that's what, what we're looking at in, in 4G, 5G uh, solutions. Um, <clears throat> so why do we want to do that? Cost is a big reason. Availability, compatibility between different manufacturers, endpoints from uh, Motorola solutions working with uh, base stations uh, from Nokia and lots of different var variations of, of that, that kind of theme. In most cases, if you go to uh, an, an industrial radio solution, that compatibility is really you know, one or two vendors. It's not necessarily going to go across a wide area. So this, this we think, is, is a big advantage to these, and, um, and it's part of the reason we've been moving our business and our, our demand is shifting more in terms of five, 4G and 5G bands. So here are six bands that are, these are U.S. bands, by the way, we really work in this, this country, that are potentially available for 4G and 5G solutions. Not all of them available in all places. Cost vary, quality varies. So that, that's what I'm going to kind of talk through here is and to think about, you know, what is your requirement in terms of throughput, range, uh, and, and availability, and what of these six should you be looking at all of them? Or, or just a few. And, uh, you know, again, any questions or observations as we go through? And anybody see one that they thought should be here that's missing? Something they're, they're working with on a 4G, 5G basis? Okay, I, we're, we're starting low and we're working up. 
the, uh, the easy way to do it. So 600 megahertz was an auction that was held four or five years ago now, I think. Uh, some of the first uh, uh, renewal standards in terms of construction are coming up. Uh, and and uh, that has an impact on the holders of this. This mostly went to T-Mobile in the auctions. Uh, it's held by, uh, by DISH as well. Um, it is, and it's held in some places, particularly in some of the more rural places that might be of interest to the oil and gas industry by investors, right? And, and so those investors, we know most of them, some of them are, you know, potentially sellers. Historically, these companies have gone into the auction, held the spectrum for a long time, sold it to AT&T or Verizon or, or T-Mobile, right? That's been their business model. And mostly, that's what I think they're still waiting for. But we have had conversations. We, we did a, a program with Nokia where we were able to get some spectrum uh, for a, a trial up in New York State uh, of the 600 megahertz spectrum. My understanding is it worked very well. Uh, we had another situation where um, we were we had spectrum available, but the customer in 600 from an investor, but the customer chose to do something different. This was actually a, a refinery situation. Um, so the, you know there are possibilities here. So uh, five megahertz paired, very good propagation at, at 600 megahertz. Lots of chips and modules and base stations because this is used by heavily by T-Mobile. Um, and so, uh, you know, pretty interesting ecosystem, uh, great propagation. If you can get it, and particularly if you have a long range application or if you need that full 10 megahertz, very, very attractive. Most places, so, so investors hold something like 10% of the, we, we measure in megahertz pops, right? The 10% the of the population is how, how you could think of it um, around the country. So. You won't find it in Houston or Dallas or San Antonio um, because it's in the hands of the carriers and they will not let it let it go. But you might find it in West Texas, uh, for for example, if that's if that's of interest. So we can talk to you about this. We don't represent today any of these these holders, but it's potentially uh, interesting spectrum and and um, potentially we could help you with this. All right, uh, this is the band I've been working on for the last eight years. We've sold this in about a third of the country. It's not just myself. That it, some of you will know John Veslowski, 6'6", former Army uh, Ranger, <laughs> Special Forces, I think. Um, um, but uh, he's, he's uh, for example, this is now held by Enterprise Products in, in Texas, in much of Texas. Um, very high power limits, also excellent propagation. Historically, this was what I call an industrial radio band, right? It, it, for RF. MIMO Max, GE, uh, and please, uh, if there's anyone here that I didn't mention, there's a dozen different manufacturers have, have sold equipment in this space. Provides high throughput per megahertz, but there's only two megahertz. Um, very reliable service uh, and, and designed for your kinds of applications, types of historical applications. So good spectrum. Still available in certain areas, like uh, around the Marcellus uh, region. I think there's still some up in the Bakken region that's available. Talk to me, or, or I'll put you in, John, in touch with John Veslowski. It's our, we don't compete because his client holds a particular part of the country, and my, my client holds the rest. And then, you know, in this area though, Centerpoint, Encore have acquired the Spectrum, right? So it isn't available necessarily. Uh, everywhere that you might want it. Um, this, this I think is is excellent. So, so what's new here is a little over a year ago we got 3GPP standardization as a 4G and a 5G band in this massive machine to machine type connections. Low speed, long latency, so it doesn't work for every application. Excellent power uh, management. If you can potentially do a battery device that would last for 10 years if it only wakes up, you know, once a day. The, the meter guys are asking for 20 years now is what they'd, they'd like to see, uh, battery life. Um, we we're talking about these sensors earlier. Uh, I guess the sensor for some sort of poisonous gas, you got to get out quick. You know, this is the kind of thing where if the sensor were connected to an NB-IoT network, you would have this very long distance propagation, probably not 50 miles on a mobile, you know, on, on somebody's lapel, but probably 10. We've, we did 25 in our tests in Jacksonville with, with a similar system. 
Um, and, and that's the kind of application where, since the chipset is you know, less than $10, the module is probably less than $30, you could have one of these on every, on every lapel. And, and I'm sure you can think of other applications where you have lots and lots of endpoints and, and you'd like to, to uh, have that connectivity. And it does have mobile capability, although most of the deployments here have been fixed uh, so far. So, but NB-IoT is a mobile standard. So that's, what, that's what's new in that, that band. And um, if you have applications along these lines, we're very interested in developing uh, those as they come along. All right, uh, 900 megahertz, this is the one I do not represent. Um, and checking with Mauricio, he said he thought we should include it. I noticed Alice Moy Gonzalez from Anterix is here at the show. I don't think they're exhibiting, but uh, uh, if you find Alice, she can tell you more about this. Uh, so this was historical uh, spectrum that probably most many of your companies would have, right? If uh, in the BILT, business industrial land transportation area, 12 and a half kilohertz channels paired. Pairing is different, by the way, than the international band eight, and that's been kind of an issue. So uh, Enterix went through to the FCC. They got an approval to. Um, I, I always want to say reband. They use it to to clear essentially the, the narrow band users to I believe the lower portion of the band. That they're, they're going to have a three by three broadband service in the upper portion of the band in about a hundred counties. It's already been cleared, and they are they say they're prioritizing where um, they clear the existing users out of the band or move relocate those existing users in in order to open up the band. So this has been quite successful in the utility space, um, and uh, they're continuing with it. So far, this is only 4G spectrum. They have an application to convert it uh, so that it will be approved for 5G. 5G, by the way, you know, was really designed for very wide carriers, right? So, you know, 10, 20, 100 megahertz type carriers. Five megahertz was the minimum so far, and, and Enterix is seeking to reduce that to three. Um, so that, that's what's, what's going on here. The, um, all of these bands that I've talked about so far are frequency division duplex uh, spectrum. So fixed amount of capacity, uplink and downlink, because of the dynamics of spectrum, and this is in your charts, uh, there will be slightly less uplink capacity than downlink capacity, right? Because your, your link budget is, tends to be better on the downlink than the uplink in, in most circumstances. So your ratio of how much capacity you have is limited. And so, you know, it's six megahertz altogether, but you get, you get three megahertz of uplink, assuming, and certainly in the utility space, we see more demand for uplink sensors uh, and, and different devices sort of feeding back to headquarters than the other way around. Uh, but but certainly worth looking at this e excellent propagation uh, there. Okay, uh, this is the one I'm excited about. They are our client. I, I admit this. So Legato Networks holds band 54. Um, it is 1670 to 1675 megahertz. It was approved by 3GPP uh, for 4G in December and for 5G in uh, March of this year. So uh, w w quite a rapid approval cycle. Uh, I think at some point, Mauricio maybe said, well, you know, it's kind of automatic. It's not automatic to get into 3GPP. We, it takes an investment in smart people, uh, time, money to, to go through that process and get the standardization done. So we're very excited about this. Um, we do have uh, manufacturers. We don't have Nokia yet. We're working on them to, to come along um, and, and uh, others as, as well. There's uh, you know, devices becoming available, modules, that, that kind of thing, that will, will make this band, I think, quite good. So this, unlike the first three that I mentioned, is time division duplex. So you have the full five megahertz, and it operates in a ping pong basis, right? That's the speed of light. Transmit and receive. In that situation, you can set the uplink downlink time ratio. And, and because of that, you can use the majority of the spectrum for uplink, if that's what you have could be a, a very effective use. It's still very good propagation. By the way, these low mid-band frequencies have been the most valuable in the carrier auctions. You're not in the carrier business, um, but it, it, when the carriers look at this, they say, aha, this is kind of the sweet spot, the Goldilocks zone between capacity and coverage. Obviously, 
The longer the coverage you have, that's great, but you only get so many megabits per second within that coverage area. If you start to shrink that down and you have more cells, you get more total, total capacity within your network. And so this is, as you go smaller and smaller, you know, something that just covers uh, this room or, the, uh, or a portion of the convention center, we're talking millimeter wave kind of stuff, massive capacity, but very short coverage. Uh, this is kind of in the middle, we think, a good place to start. If you start to think about that layer cake, do you need the coverage zone? Do you need the capacity? This could kind of fit into either of those cases, not into the super high capacity, you know, uh, stadium and convention center, but, but substantial capacity. And it's also a place where you can get into 4G and 5G at, at a cost that is as reasonable as you're going to get in uh, uh, the space. These, these, are, uh, these are not uh, cheap uh, bands, but, uh, but certainly quite reasonable. Um, so we're excited about this one, uh, and, and come and talk to me if you, you have more questions about this one. Okay, this was, this was what I did for Sprint Nextel uh, before I started this, this business. Was I, a team and I did the acquisitions of 2.5 gigahertz uh, around the country. Um, it was a very good team. They did a very good job. And almost all of this spectrum, there's also recently been an auction that was mostly won by uh, T-Mobile. Uh, Sprint has since merged into T-Mobile. Um, and we had a great time doing it. It's now, I think, on average, T-Mobile has something like 160 megahertz on average across the U.S. The total is uh, just under 200 in this band. In a very small number of places, we can help you, or on your own potentially, you could acquire um, this spectrum. It's, it has gone through an FCC rule change. This is band 41, by the way. 4G, 5G. If you have a T-Mobile phone, it's likely using this anytime you're in a relatively urban, even suburban area. This is where they try to, to load up their network. Um, so lots of devices, lots of base stations, lots of chips. Not necessarily targeted at your business, right? So you have to take a look and see. Uh, but, but could be very valuable. The problem is that team that I worked with did a really good job. <laughs> and so most of this has been uh, you know, soaked up by T-Mobile and it's in their network and they're not likely to, to part with it. So that would be the challenge. It's, it's a matter of looking where you are and seeing whether, whether there's an opportunity there. Um, I have a colleague, uh, Andreas Pizzarakis. He works all the time in broadband and particularly in this band. So um, if you have any questions here, um, he'd be glad to talk to you. I'll be glad to put you, put you in touch. And uh, if you can find it, this could be a, a real pearl. All right. The last one is the one that I think you've probably heard the most about. Mauricio mentioned CBRS. Uh, so this is the 3.55 to 3.7 gigahertz band. You can operate here without a priority access license, and you're just in competition. There's uh, with other holders. The um, the licenses are governed. The frequencies are governed by uh, spectrum administration spectrum access systems like Federated Wireless, Google. What's the What's the KeyBridge? Is the one you mentioned? There's There's two or three others, um, and basically they under FCC rules have a common uh, shared access to a database. And if you ask for access in a particular area, you go and check that database, see if anybody else is there. If it's available, they'll allow you to operate under given rules, relatively low power, right? Because this is a shared situation. Um, and, and we're at a much higher frequency. So the propagation is, is pretty limited. Could be very good for serving a, I, I would think a refinery, pump station, that kind of thing that's a relatively small geography. We're talking a kilometer or so type, type radius in a, in a typical application. Um, and you can also get priority access licenses. So these were auctions. Priority access license means that if you're using it, nobody else can come on. It's, it's yours to use. That there is a, a higher tier that belongs to the US government. In general, that's not an issue unless you happen to be along the coast and there's an aircraft carrier uh, group operating in, in the region because they use this same spectrum for uh, radars, or if you happen to be in an area where they have certain earth stations. But most of the country, a priority access license is, is 
as close as you're going to get to exclusive license. They still have to coordinate with the with the SAS with the Spectrum <coughs> Access System. There is some extra expense. Yep. You have to pay the SAS for all this database operation, and there's some some lower powers. But this is an easy way to get into license Spectrum, relatively low cost. It doesn't have the performance of some of the others, but it is a, a full 10 megahertz. This is also a TDD channel, so it allows you to uh, vary your uplink downlink ratio. Uh, for applications that don't, don't require wide, wide coverage, uh, this, this is a good solution. So I tried to summarize all of this. We all have to have our charts with the, the greens and the yellows and, and the reds uh, in terms of overall situation. Um, di slightly different view than, than you get for, from Anterix. Uh, again, cautions. 700 megahertz A block, excellent overall, but throughput and and uh, capacity, uh, the channel width are, are limited. Um, the a number of these have excellent sort of top line, top four lines, but limited coverage, right? So certainly worth checking into those, and if they're available, worth worth checking out. Sorry, I'm blocking the way here a little bit. Um, uh, and then uh, the band 54 looks to me to be a very good compromise in terms of, of the various attributes. We're recommending it highly. The, I will tell you the equipment situation is not widely available yet. And part of what we're doing here is gathering, you know, what do you, what do you want to do? We're talking to the manufacturers. We're encouraging them to develop the applications. Part of that comes from demand pull. So help me channel your demand to the manufacturers. We know once we got the 3GP approval for 4G and 5G, we became confident that that's going to happen. All right, so, guys, we're going to have to cut it off.